my friends, it's Pat Sloan here. We are on Butterfly Day and I have got one side up here. We are on the curves. The curves, the curves, we're doing not this one, but we're doing the small ones that are down here today. And then next week we'll do all of the other style. There's two different styles of curves, but I wanted to show you, I put half of this up here. Look at that. Oh, it's looking so good. But the, all these little parts are making me nuts. Make them nuts. So I am leaving this up here because I am going to have to be sewing these curves over the next couple of days because I'm going to be doing both sets of curves, uh, sewing them. And I want to sew some sections of both of these sides just to see how much I get done in a couple of days because then I have other projects I have to work on. But I can at least get a few things sort of, you know, together following the diagram. It's kind of a horizontal chunking of things to uh, sew them together. But I need to get some parts together. So I will be doing that. And we're going to do curves today. Uh, there are two other things uh, for today. The Jolly Bar uh, Sew Along, we are done. And mine is all packaged and ready to go to the spa tomorrow, which I am excited about. Uh, and actually, it's going to the spa today. I'm sorry, going to the spa today. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a tidy up challenge, but we're moving that to another day because it's going to take us the rest of this video to talk about curves. So let's get to it. All right. Get your cup of courage if you need it. <laughs> Encourage being coffee, tea, hot chocolate, a soda, whatever. I've got mine in the May the 4th inch be with you uh, mug. I've got some great coffee in here. <laughs> this is some that Laura, our ambassador, sent me. It's got like a pecan. Mmm, smells so good. Okay, all right. <laughs> we are on curves, and it's been a hot minute since I've done a curve. I've done them in the past, uh, and it's just like not my go to thing. So I did do a little bit of test blocks, which is always a plus for all of you. So I'm going to walk through just the components. They take a little bit more because you need a template and you got to prepare a template, et cetera, et cetera. Also, you want to watch Kendall Taylor, our ambassador's channel, because he is also demoing how to do this. Plus, you can just put uh, Drunkard's Path or something like that into the YouTube search and find a zillion other videos about it. We're doing the basic way. The one reason is we only have to make a few. So if you happen to have templates for Drunkard's Path, which is basically what this one is, that is this size, which is small, you know, use the templates that you have already owned. But if you don't, I'm going to show you how to make them. We only have to make eight. Uh, they are small, so we're starting out with a smaller one. I'm just following what's in the book here. Uh, next week, we will do both of the wheel blocks. And the wheel blocks are a, uh, they have like three layers instead of two, and they have a, some p other piecing. So they're a little bit more, but there's just four of those. So, and they're two different sizes. So two of one size, two of the other. So all in all, you know, we're not making many of these, which is why you can make your own template. And it's really not going to wear out by the cutting because you're not cutting very many things. Now, our friend Esther sent me her templates. And what she did is, let me read her note. So she sent me all her templates and she said she uses cardstock, uh, two thicknesses of cardstock. So she's gluing these two thicknesses of cardstock and then uh, the paper, the pattern paper that she made a copy from the book and glued that on top and glued all of this, you know, glued the layers and then put some books on it to dry. And so that gave her, these are, you know, pretty firm templates. And then, so that's one way you can create your templates. You can also do them on template plastic. I looked around and I thought I had template plastic and I couldn't find it. So uh, either I have stored it very well or I no longer have it. But the other thing you can use is freezer paper, which will give you a similar, not quite as firm as the cardstock, but good enough. And so it'll be quite doable for this number of pieces you have to cut. So let's just do a quick uh, jump over to the ironing board where I show you how to press your freezer paper together. The way I often do a template, particularly if I don't have to use it very much, and like in the case of this one, there, I'm only cutting a few pieces from each of the templates, is to work with freezer paper. And I do prefer the brand name. I just think it is a better product. 
uh, and I think a lot of people would agree with that. So, um, okay, so you, uh, if you don't have freezer paper, remember it's different than wax paper, totally different, don't use wax paper. But freezer paper has like a shiny side. I don't know if you can see that. But this is shiny and that is what we're going to sort of warm it up and, and adhere it to itself to make a couple layers to have something a little bit firmer. Uh, so I just pulled a piece off and you could you know measure it out to be sure that you have enough space but i'm just going to fold it in thirds like this right now there so i have it in thirds and when i go ahead and press it this will warm that sort of shiny stuff to itself and that just gives me enough firmness to work with so that i don't have a floppy single piece of paper a single piece of paper just is not enough uh, so here we go. So now you can see this is actually quite firm. It's almost like a cardstock or something like that. And because often you will have, you might have this and not have cardstock or something else. Oops, I hit press of this of the steam. <laughs> Got a little wrinkly this time on the back side. So there, this is three layers, and I think this is enough for doing this number of pieces. If I were doing a whole lot more, like a lot more pieces, I would probably go with the cardstock and the paper or the template plastic. But just for a couple, this is the way to go. <laughs> now, I should have mentioned, <laughs> you might want to trace this shape on because you're going to have a harder time seeing through this to trace the shape. So, or you can just glue like uh, Esther did, glue the pattern right on top of this afterwards, uh, and then you don't have to even trace the shape. So that might be the way you want to go. So I am going to use Esther's because uh, she so kindly sent them to me. First, let's just look at the fabric we have to deal with for this week, and then that way we will be set to go. Um, let's see, I've got, thanks to Esther again, I now have some color copies that she made me uh, and we are going to do these small wheels so the wheels are all down here one two three four those are the wheels so we have the turquoise set with the dots the little honeycomb and the floral and then we have variations of this group of fabric the polka dot the honeycomb in blue the navy solid the like geode um, stuff Where's threads, threads, in the sort of the bluey, the dark blue, and then the blue floral. So you're doing combinations of these pieces for these uh, these three blocks. Now I, it's a small one, so it's it's going to be if you've not done them for a long time or ever. I highly recommend that you take some other fabric and just make some if you're an adventurous soul and. <laughs> And you've had plenty, plenty of, uh, of, you know, substance to get you going. And you're on your total A game. Remember, you have to be total A game for this. Uh, then just go ahead and use your fabric if you have enough of it. If you're working with a kit, I don't recommend that. I recommend doing a test one if you haven't done it in a long time because you don't want to mess up your fabric from the kit and not have it anymore. Uh, but if you're using your other fabric and you have tons, then just use your own. I would use my own fabric then to do the test because if it turns out, you've got one. Uh, in this case, you know, I, I'm using the kit, so I don't want to, I didn't want to mess up. Okay. So you, there are a couple ways you can approach this and I will show you my preferred method. The pattern tells you which templates you need. And in this case, they are a G and H. And so I call this the pie shape and the other shape. You'll hear people say convex and convex and whatever. That doesn't work for my brain whatsoever. I work with a pie shape and the other shape. So <laughs> that's just what works best for me. You do what works best for you. Uh, let's, let's scroll in. So to get this image, it, using templates, and if you've never used them before, means that you need to get the image onto the fabric. And looking at our piece right here, we have these two fabrics 
These two fabrics are the, the middle, they're the pie shape, right? The middle, the pie shape, and the dot is the not pie shape, the other shape. The dot is the other shape. So we've got the other shape and the pie shape. So what I tend to do is that I, and these are not used, are they used anywhere else? Am I lying? No. Once you use this particular set of fabric, it's done. You can make your half square triangles. Uh, so you don't have to be super frugal, but I'll show you one way when I'm using the not pie shape that I be frugal with my fabric. So here, I mean, you can be really frugal, particularly if you need to be, because you, maybe you, you're using some fabric, you don't have a lot of it left. Uh, you can line up your straight edge of the template on the straight of the fabric. You could make it a little bit further in. Some people like to make this, the, see there's the, um, the seam allowance is already drawn on the template. So we're using the template from the outside, from the very outside. Let me show you the template. I didn't mention that. See the template? You've got the seam allowances already sort of sketched on there and then you have the outside line. So we're using the whole shape as it comes right there in the pattern. Uh, and you have to read patterns. Some patterns give you this part only, the inside, the final size with no seam allowance. So read your patterns if you're doing somebody else's. But for the butterfly, we are good. Some people like to extend out on this part and have a bit more that they will then trim away so they feel like it gives them a little bit more control. You could do that. I prefer to draw it first. That's just how I like to work. And I probably would be super frugal and maybe go down to the edge and draw. I'm just drawing with a regular pen. You can draw anything you like. Uh, it's on the outside. It is not going to be, it's going to be in your seam allowance. So there would be the shape. Now, if it's a straight line, I will use the ruler. I will use the ruler and go on that line and trim it, trim it off. Then I have to cut this, cut the curve. Let me, sh let me scroll in. I think you can see it here. Okay. So when I cut the curve, I could take scissors and cut it, or I could cut it. I tend to just go slowly with my rotary cutter. And then I'm going to check it to the template. So I'm basically just slowly going around that curve. And then I will check it to be sure that I'm good. So I put the template on top because when you draw with your pen, you're actually making a little wider line. And so I find that sometimes like right now I've got a sliver. Can you see that? I have a sliver extra on the curve, which is where I do not want that at all because that will change the size of your block. So there I just trimmed it away. And I feel like I have a lot of more control myself rather than originally doing it with this because I don't know, just for me, that, but you could do the originally, you could just go, you know, you could just take it right with your rotary cutter, but you wanna be careful you're not slicing the paper because this isn't a hard uh, ruler, it's not like, you know, like ruler plastic, which is really firm and you don't, you know, sort of cut away at it. With the paper, it's really easy as you're cutting to actually be trimming down the template so it's smaller and smaller over time. Because we're doing so few blocks, you are probably not going to run into that. All right, so there we go. I have got this piece and then I will do the, the uh, non, pie piece and then I will repeat that for this particular block. Now when I'm uh, doing this, if I want to be really frugal, I can go right here. You know, I, I can get as close as I want to this. Like I have a little cut right in there if you can see. So I want to, you know, keep my, my template away from that. But I could, you know, this is pretty frugal. So I'm right on the edge. And then I will, I'm going to draw it again. This is just how I'm going to do all of them. And then I will use this ruler again to do the straight sides and then the rotary cutter to cut the curve. So now I can cut, cut on the straight and then cut on the other straight. You want to just, you know, you want to be careful with that. So I'm get right into that corner. And now I have the curve of the non, <laughs> the non pie shape. I'm going to cut the little edges. There we go. And now once again, 
I will just very carefully do the curve. You may even like using a smaller rotary cutter, one of the smaller ones. Uh, I just always have this 45 size out and use that. Now once again, I will check my template because often doing this method, I will want to trim inside that curve. Yeah, so I'm going to trim everything a little bit more. And I know it's double work, but and probably as I go along, uh, doing more of these. See now, I just went right up on the paper right now. That's what's why it starts to cut away. You might find you have more control cutting with your scissors. You might like that. So you could try one both ways. Okay, what we're going to end up doing is pinning these with the pie on the bottom and this on the top like that because here it is right sides up. Here they are right sides together. But we need centers matching and then we will match corners and corners. And so that's the process of doing this corners and corners and trying to show this little tiny block and keep my fingers out of the way is going to be a challenge, but we're going to we're going to go over to the machine and I will pin and line this up and sew it. Here is really quick where I want to show you how I cut from here and then the next time I will rotate the non-pi unit and cut this way so that rather than saying cut this way, this way, you know, this way across and have all of these extra fabric, this is the most frugal way so that I use as, you know, I have as little waste fabric as possible. Let's pin it here before we go to the machine. You have the pie shape and the not pie shape. Uh, you will be sewing it with the pie shape on the bottom and the knot pie on the top like this. And so I want to crease it and have just, I'm just going to finger crease it for a center mark and then finger crease this one for a center mark. And that is my matching point. This is tiny. Like I said, if you, you might, uh, even try it without any pins. Although I think for your first one, having not done them for a while, you probably want to put some pins. Now I pin so that they're on my left side when I'm working. It's like I'm sewing this curve so that I can kind of pull them away and not go over or even not even put them all the way up so that I don't hit them with my, um, with my needle and I don't have to take them out as I'm going. So if they're far enough back and I can just slide it a little bit, I don't have to be removing them. Then you will just take your first end and pin it in place. Because these now are bias, both of the non-pi shape and the pi shape, these outer edges and this inner curve are bias, which is to your advantage. Uh, if you've ever done clothing and you've done inset seams, you have worked with curves. You might like smaller pins than I use. Some people like to put small pins. Okay, so if you start with three pins, then what I will do is kind of go to the middle of each side, go to the middle and put another one so that I've got a, just another anchor point in here as you go along because you're going to sort of ease it. You're going to let, let that stretch be your friend and it's going to help you as you sew. Uh, so here we go. I will just put another pin in here and there we go. So this is ready and I'm not too crazy if they don't a hundred percent the whole time, like get that right, the edges, like as I'm going, but I'm going to try, you know, I don't want them to slide apart so that, that, um, like the bottom one is further out because then it means your seam allowances are off. Uh, so like right now, I want to push that up a little bit. There we go. Okay. So you've got this and we're going to just sew that curve. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to ease around here and not, uh, you know, just not pull too hard, but just let it come around. And if there's a pin in the way, I can pull it out some like this so that I don't sew over it go around, around, around till you get to the other side. I am using the stiletto to help me sort of maneuver. And even though you see like pleats and stuff on the left, they are not where you're sewing. 
So you're okay. You're not creating pleats over here on the sewing side. And just let it release every so often if you need to. I'm going to take that last pin out and then come to the end. Here are the four of them sewn. There's two the same, two the same, because they alternate. We want to press them opposite directions so that they nest when we piece them. So uh, I'll do two of them towards the pie shape here. So these two will go towards the pie shape. And then the other ones will go towards the not pie shape, the outside edge, like that. And so let me just get one at a time. And we want to have these ones towards the pie shape. And so I just press and come on the front and press. There we go. So I've got one block and then again this is towards the pie shape and I just kind of find it helps to do it from the back side first. Just you know not pushing or anything. You're just pressing from the top and there we go. And then when I do the other two they will go to the not pie shape to the outside edge and let me just get them I'm actually pressing left-handed which is not my normal so let me just press this guy here and the last one and then that way I will piece them I'm doing this on the outside be sure that you're getting it pressed all the way out because this one you can see the little line there. See, I don't know if you can see it, but I didn't get it, you know, I had to be sure I opened that up because it's easy not to. Okay, so they will be opposites each other to make the curved block. There we go. So I'll piece that and I will be right back. Here is the first one. I have seven more of these, uh, two of each for each side of the butterfly. So another one like this and then three other sets. So there's four sets for this week uh, in this style in kind of the pie style. Now this one goes right here. Look at that. <gasps> beautiful, beautiful. So like I said in the beginning of this that I will have this up here. I will be sewing the rest of the blocks for this week. I actually am going to video now next week's part of the um, the wheel blocks because once you're on a roll with this stuff, like here's the wheel blocks. Once you're on a roll with this, you gotta you got to finish it. That's my... <laughs> You might find the same thing. After you've done these small ones, you might be like, like, okay, I'm in a groove. You do get in a groove. You get in a groove of sewing that curve where you're just like on a sweet spot and you're like, okay, these are, I can knock these out. And that's um, how I approach curves because otherwise you sort of get out of sync and then you got to sort of get back in it again and like, nope, nope, I'm just barreling through all of them. But I will show you the second set in next week's video plus whatever I get sewn together in the next few days so that I can handle and manage this a little bit better because as you know I can't leave it up on my design wall. A lot of you this is all you're sewing so it is on your design wall all the time but for me things have to come up and down every single day to do the videos and so I need I need some of this sewn together. Okay my friend I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. Have a lot of fun making little, little pie blocks today. <laughs> See you online.